after we're recording. And we are recording. Welcome to legs, shoulders, abs workout. Super, super excited. Remember, your workout today should be about 20% harder than your current fitness level. That's it. The goal is not to kick your butt. The goal is not to leave it all on the floor. The goal is not to be crippled from your workout. The goal is to challenge yourself 20% beyond your current ability. Let's get started. Make sure you've got some dumbbells nearby. We're gonna go through a preparatory sequence first, just to make sure that your body is prepped for the workout. This is not necessarily a warm up. It's really more of a preparatory sequence so that you get the most out of your workout. Take a big inhale up. And then let's do that two more times. Each time when you inhale, I want you to lengthen the space from your rib cage to your hip bone. Let's do that one more time. Lengthen the space from your rib cage to your hip bone. And now inhale and keep your arms up. Stay here and just relax. On go, you are going to really lengthen yourself out as much as you can, reaching for the ceiling. Lengthen your out, yourself out as much as possible. Are you ready? And go. Reach up for the ceiling as high as you possibly can. Lengthen out the space all along your spine. Very active. This is very, 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 very aggressive and active. Lift, 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 lift. It will be hard to breathe. Relax, catch your breath, and just kind of move about. We're going to do this two more times. This exercise activates transverse abdominus, which is your most important abdominal muscle because it contracts inward. It's what draws your core inward to protect the spine. Arms overhead relaxed and go. Reach up as high as you possibly can. Reach, reach, reach. Make yourself every centimeter longer that you possibly can very aggressively. You may feel your back muscles engage. It may be hard to breathe. Both of those are signs that you're doing it right. Lengthen, 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 lengthen and relax. Catch your breath. Just relax for a minute and then we're going to do one more time just like this. One of my favorite preparatory exercises because it teaches you to contract your abdomen in, in a bracing fashion because this is what transverse abdominus does. It draws you in, whereas rectus abdominus does for um, torso flexion, which we'll do at the end of the workout. This is super important at the beginning of the workout. Arms over your head relaxed and go. Reach, 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 reach. Lengthen out that space from your rib cage to your hip bone as much as possible. If you feel your back muscles grab, you're on the right track. If it's hard to breathe, you're on the right track. Farther, lengthen, more, 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 and relax. Keep your feet separated and let's come into spinal rotations. As you turn away from one leg, I want you to activate and squeeze your glute on that side. So if you're turning, to, if you're turning away from your right leg, you're gonna squeeze your right glute. When you turn away from your left leg, squeeze your left glute. The name of the game is just to let your arms come around you so that you get some spinal rotation. And then try to look over your shoulder fully behind you, making sure that you really squeeze through your glute because that's what provides that spinal rotation. It's good to warm you up prepare you, but also just bring a little bit of mobility to the hips and the spine. One of my favorites. Plus it just feels so good. Squeeze your glutes, squeeze your glutes, squeeze your glutes. Abs drawn in, two more. Keeping your feet separated, take a look down and make sure that your feet are really and truly parallel to each other. Nice wide stance. My mat is upside down and it's not sticking. Feet are truly parallel to each other. Take a look down and make sure. Now, bend your knees, stick your glutes back, come side to side, getting heavy onto the leg that you're sitting onto. Nice and heavy on that leg. We are beginning a dynamic stretch of the inner thigh. And we are activating the glutes, the quads, the hamstrings of the leg that you're sitting into. So I want you to really drive off the heel that you're sitting into. Every now and then take a look down and make sure that your feet are staying parallel to each other. And if this feels totally cool and good, we're gonna go deeper. The name of the game is to sit fully all the way down. Sit deeply into the heel of the leg that you're sitting into. One of my favorite 
preparatory exercises because it's lateral, because it's great to give the inner thighs a proper active warm up. It fires up the glutes and it starts to prepare the knees. Keep your toes relaxed, sitting deeply. And let's do one more and relax. So what I want you to do is keep your feet wide. I want you to just turn to your side so that you are in a split squat stance, arms up over your head and you're gonna relax your heel down and then just press up. Relax down and press up. We're just gonna do this about, I don't know, five or six times, maybe 10 times. I want you to warm up your calf, but I also just want to get you into this position right here because we are gonna be doing split squats today. And so this is just a great way to actively warm up and stretch that hip flexor, fire up the glute a little bit, just to get you prepared for this position. One more. Step forward, other leg back. Big step back, rise up into your heel. Press into that heel. You might get some compression. You might get some discomfort in that back toe. That's actually by design here for this exercise is I just wanna get that back foot and ankle prepared for split squats while we're also, like I said, getting a stretch on the hip flexor in front but also getting that glute activated in back. Lift super, super tall. And let's do three more here. One more. And then step forward. From here, we're going to step back into a modified lunge, step together. Modified lunge, step together. Just like that, just to begin to warm up the lunging position. And as this is comfortable for you, we're gonna make it a little bit bigger. You can stay here and just continue to repeat this alternating, or we're going to take a big reach up and then come to a full runner's lunge and alternate each side. Another one of my absolute favorites. This does so much for your body. I'm sure you're feeling it. Make sure that that back knee is gently tapping down to the ground because that ensures you're getting enough depth at the bottom to stretch the hip flexor, but also to fire up the glute. Focus your energy driving into your front heel from the bottom to the top. Here, drive into your heel here, very aggressively because that is what's gonna fire up the hip extensors, predominantly your glutes, but definitely some hamstrings. And those are the two, this activation right here, that hip extension there, doesn't really get used throughout your normal day. So we wanna make sure that we're really reinforcing it and strengthening it during the workout here. One more, and we got one more prep. And relax, one more prep, feet together, knees bent, coming into RDL positioning. Booty is back, slight arch in your lower back. Thumbs come right in front of your knees and you're gonna press up and back. Those of you guys that are inside of the glutes project know this exercise. I don't know if I've done it here with you guys on Saturday Glute Gang, but this is going to warm up the back of the shoulder and start to open up the front of the shoulder. The point of that is we're doing shoulders today. So I'm just gonna make sure that your shoulder girdle is really ready. This exercise is so good because it wakes up that posterior deltoid. And that's gonna be our first shoulder exercise today is to address posterior deltoid with a rear delt fly. Two more, one more, and I lied. I'm gonna give you one more prep exercise. Feet together, knees bent. Bring your weight onto one leg. Don't cheat. Keep this leg free. Keep this knee bent, the leg that you're standing on. Keep that knee slightly bent and soft, not locked out. If you have a hard time keeping the standing knee sl slightly soft, that means your hamstrings are super weak and you're forcing your quads to take over. So you've got to keep your knees, knee 
slightly soft so that hamstring can really fire up. From here, with that knee bent, I want you to look around your space, looking left or right, using your arms to counterbalance. Looking left to right in a sweeping motion, making sure that knee stays bent and the other leg stays free. Now, look up, look down, look all around, Dr. Seuss tells us. Look every which way, look everywhere, okay? Everywhere, it's gonna really throw your balance off, that's the whole point. You're gonna feel your foot grab, you're gonna feel your arch fire up, and you're gonna feel that entire leg that you're balancing on. All of the muscles up and down the kinetic chain are going to fire up. That's exactly what we're doing on this exercise. And relax, both feet down, both knees soft. Find your balance, settle in first. Settle in first, then look left or right, just to begin to introduce uh, the balance. Try not to grip with your toes, okay? Keep that knee soft. If you get a lot of action in your foot, in your arch, that's further reinforcement that you need to be doing this exercise, looking left to right. And now, look up, look down, look all around. If this is easy for you, look behind you. Look all the way down. Move your head and your eyes. Have your eyes move all around. The more you move your head and your eyes, in all of the different directions, the more it's going to destabilize your balance and bring more value to this exercise. This really is something that you should be doing every single day. It's so good for so many things. Include this in your weekly routine. And relax. Let's get started with the workout. First exercise, single leg deadlift. You need a dumbbell paired with a rear delt Fly. Let me show you the first two exercises and then we will begin. First exercise, single leg deadlift. I'll repeat as we do it. You are on one leg, holding your dumbbell in the same hand of the leg that's moving. And we are coming into single leg deadlift, tap for balance. 15 reps. And remember what I said at the top of the workout, this dumbbell should be challenging enough that after the superset, you need a break. Second exercise, three to five pound dumbbells. RDL positioning, hands at your knees, slight arch in your back, shoulders back and down, arms are coming out to the side with a slight bend at your elbow. Really important that your shoulders are back in space and down towards your hips when you come into this rear fly. So three to five pounds, if you've been practicing this exercise, you might be able to do eight, but not too many people are going to do this exercise with great technique at 10, at 10 pounds, unless you're super fit and you've really been working your strength. Let's get started. Grab your dumbbell for single leg deadlift. We're going to do both legs in the set. If you're standing on your right leg, you're holding your dumbbell in your left hand. Knee is soft. Here we go. Tap at the top for balance. When you tap at the top, I want you to end with your hip fully opened. And that means you're gonna squeeze the crap out of your glutes in that top position. Squeeze your butt cheek on that one side. So if you're standing on your right leg, you squeeze your right glute here firmly. It's gonna bring a little bit of a posterior rotation to your pelvis. So let your pelvis tuck under slightly, but continue to keep your abs drawn in. Okay, squeeze your glutes, 15. And then we're going to go right in and do the other leg as well. So this is also a change from what we have been doing in the past. When we have a unilateral exercise like this, we're still going to do both sets on both sides. And when you're done with your 15, switch sides. Those of you guys that are new, I'm not great at counting repetitions because I'd rather spend my mental energy coaching, teaching, cueing. So you are responsible to count out your reps. If you're standing on your left leg, you're holding your dumbbell in your right hand, or the leg that's moving is the hand that you hold your dumbbell on. In my community, that's really important. You'll see other people out there on internet land 
demonstrating this exercise with same hands and same leg. I'm just not a fan of that. And it's really not technically biomechanically accurate. We could talk about that more on another day. But for now, I want you to really be heavy on your heel that you're standing on, keeping that knee slightly bent. You'll notice one leg is better than the other, totally normal. Try to keep your hips level to each other and really make sure you squeeze your glute a lot right there. It's okay if your knee straightens at the top of the exercise, but at the bottom, it's really important that it's slightly bent. As you're practicing, you might need to do it a little bit more slowly where you squeeze your glute, soften your knee, then move. I had to do that for years. I'd have to soften my knee first, then do the exercise, squeeze my glute, soften the knee, do the exercise. And that's totally fine. Eventually, it will become a lot more second nature for you. Dumbbells for rear delt. Feet together, knees bent, slight arch in your lower back. Dumbbells are at your knees, slight bend in your elbows, and 15 reps here, more or less. Now remember, if these two exercises are comfortable and they're not hard, and after this set, you could jump right into your next set, that's a cue that the dumbbells were not heavy enough for you. You really should need 10 to 20 seconds rest at a minimum before your second superset. You have the choice to do two supersets with me or do three. I do like a pause at the top if you haven't noticed already, but do make sure that you're keeping your shoulders back and down. If this is a new move for you, think of wearing a cape and you're opening up your cape. Your Wonder Woman cape. I know Wonder Woman doesn't wear a cape, does she? But let's pretend. Your superhero cape, okay? You're opening it up. Then, 15 reps, short rest. I'll be taking 20 to 30 seconds rest-ish. I'm not timing it. Um, and like I said, even if that wasn't, even if you don't feel that you need much of a rest, it should be hard enough that you do need a rest. And if you don't need a rest, we need to make these weight loads harder for you. If you can't do that today, that's okay. Get on the internet, look in your local area to get yourself some heavier dumbbells. As we move forward in time, I'm gonna be doing more true strength training workshops and instruction. And we're gonna be talking a lot more about building strength. And it's super, super important that your weight loads are challenging you enough because this isn't a cardio workout, even though the supersets are going to give you a little bit of a cardio boost depending on your fitness level. I really want this to be a strength training workout. Second set, you ready? Starting with that same leg that you started with before. And if that first set was comfortable, I want you to use a heavier dumbbell. If it was easy, if your technique is beautiful, if you don't feel fatigued, if you don't feel you need a break, you need a heavier dumbbell. In a perfect world, you would be doing this exercise with a 15 pound dumbbell. That's where I want you to get to. Once you get to a single 15 pound dumbbell, you then move to two 10 pound dumbbells for this exercise, okay? 15 reps more or less, heavy on the heel, really squeeze your glute, Kia, squeeze that glute at the top to fully open the hip by squeezing and activating your glute, that's just where the magic happens, and it helps to relax and open up that hip flexor. When you're done with one leg, go right to your other leg. Knees soft, okay, abs drawn in, uh, as you come forward, this dumbbell is basically heading towards your big toe. It doesn't touch the toe, you don't tap the floor, but the dumbbell is hovering above your big toe of the leg that you're standing on, okay? Technically, I would usually have it diagonal off the big toe. It's kind of hard for me to show you from here. I'll have to show you more in like a video tutorial format. So for now, since your viewpoint is of your dumbbell, 
You really want the dumbbell hovering just about above your big toe. Drive into the heel, squeeze your glutes like crazy. Try to keep your focus on the heel, off the toes, keeping your toes relaxed. Two more, 15, 12 to 15, 15 or more if your dumbbell is light. And we go right into our second set of dumbbell reverse fly. Feet together, knees soft, continue. I'll check some technique on you guys. I see you, I see you. It's so fun to be able to see you guys. Jillian, you look great. Jack Curran, you look great. Knees bent, RDL position. That means you got a little arch in your lower back and a little bend at your elbow. You really should feel this in the back of your shoulders. And if you're really good, you should feel it all throughout the face of your scapula. So your shoulder blades really should be moving towards each other, squeezing inward together, especially here. Draw your shoulder blades together, especially here. They don't widen. We want to contract them together so that the shoulders are coming back and down, keeping a slight bend at the elbow. Neck is long, shoulders towards your hips, away from your ears. 15. And then we're going to take a short break. After that 10 to 20 second break, if you want to do a third superset, please go for it. While you're resting, I'm going to demonstrate our next superset our next pairing of exercises. We've got a dumbbell RDL with a dumbbell bent arm side raise. If you wanna do RDL with a barbell or a band, you're welcome to. I'm gonna keep it to dumbbells today. And because it's RDL, this is an exercise where you really should be able to go a bit heavier. 10, 15, 20, some of you could even do 20, 25, 30 pound dumbbells here. Feet together, knees soft, um, knees soft, slightly bent, arch in the lower back, okay? You're gonna reach your hips back. Sorry, feet are not together, sorry, sorry. You're gonna reach your hips back, coming into your forward bended position. Come up, squeeze your glutes. Make sure that your knees stay slightly bent as you're going through the exercise. But it really is a hip reach back. This is a hip hinge. We're not trying to bend all the way over. That's not what this is about. You're keeping an arch in your lower back. You're keeping your chest up. And then at the top, tuck the pelvis under, squeeze the glutes. There's your RDL. Second exercise is a bent arm side raise. 90 degrees at your elbows. Elbows directly under your shoulder. From here, you come straight up so that the elbow is outside of the shoulder and that there is still 90 degrees at your elbow. There's still 90 degrees at your elbow. It's not here, okay, here. Bent arm side raise, keeping the angle at your elbow constant. Let's go. Grab your heavier dumbbells, RDL. Feet are hip distance apart. Knees are soft. Neutral arch in your lower back. Hips pull back until your dumbbells are just below your knees, maybe mid shin, depending on your flexibility. But your chest should still stay slightly above parallel. Chest is slightly above parallel. Listen, this is an exercise. This should feel heavy. This should feel heavy. This should feel challenging. And if it feels more like a cardio workout, you need to grab some heavier dumbbells here. I realize you might not have them yet and that's okay. But for our next workout, do what you can to get a greater range of dumbbells. I know that's easier said than done in this day and age because we're still experiencing a shortage in the supply chain of dumbbells. And just to give you a little insight, historically dumbbells should really only cost a dollar a pound. And unfortunately, there's a lot of price gouging going on. And we're starting to see like $3 per pound per dumbbell. So you need to make your choice. If it's worth it to just spend that amount of money, look around. The dumbbells really should be about a dollar to a dollar fifty per pound. Second exercise. 
feet together, knees soft, 90 degrees at your elbow. Give me a pause at the top, especially if your weight isn't super challenging. Now, I'm going a little weight, a little light on my weight loads these days, my friends. I'm going a little on the light side, and that's because I'm still working through some health stuff. It's all good. But just so you know, I will normally, if I didn't have to teach and talk and walk and talk and pat my tummy and rub my head and all of that at the same time, I would be doing five, maybe eight pounds on this exercise. Eight pounds at about the most until you're really skilled and practiced at this exercise with excellent technique. Slight pause at the top, unless it is a challenging weight load for you. If it's challenging, get in and out. In and out, if it's a challenging weight load. And really it should be, okay? Make sure you're keeping 90 degrees at your elbows. Once you hit your 12 to 15 mark, go ahead and take a break. And then we're gonna do our second set. I'm gonna peek in on technique. Robin Stevens, I want you to try and keep at the top, keep your, um, Keep your dumbbells right in front of your elbows. You're ending a little high with your hands. So right about here, okay? Yes, good job, good job. Yes, ma'am, you got it. Yep, there's a tendency for a lot of people on this exercise to then bring their hands up or to bring their hands in because it makes it easier on the deltoid. So you're really locking off this angle and keeping it much better, good job. Short break and then we're gonna go into our second set. How did your RDL feel? Listen. For those of you guys, I know Heidi's not here today, but some of you guys, Emmy, if you're here, some of you guys have a proper home gym. If you've got a barbell, which I hope to have very soon, if you have a barbell, you can certainly do this exercise with your barbell. I know most people do not, so that's why we're doing dumbbells, but a barbell certainly makes this exercise a lot more challenging, and that's the future of what we're gonna be doing in our workouts, okay? I will be incorporating more barbell stuff for those of you guys that plan to be working out at home forever. Let's go second set for now. I want you to just grab the heaviest resistance you can. If you're using a, a, a band, a resistance band, that's cool too. Knees soft, here we go. Make sure you're keeping that arch in your hips. So here, on the back end of your RDL, you really should feel some activation in your back. Your back muscles, you should feel something, something in your lower back if you're doing an RDL properly. And a lot of people, I got two emails this week where they said, you know, I'm feeling it in my back. Is that accurate? To some degree, yes. As long as it's not pain, you really should be feeling the musculature of your lower back is being activated. And that is part of this exercise. This exercise is predominantly glutes and hamstrings, but if you're really maintaining your neutral, natural, intentional arch in your lower back, you will feel the muscles of your lower back engage. That's proper and that's accurate. 15 here. Oh, they feel so good today. I could do this all day long. They feel so good. And yes, that's an indication that I need heavier dumbbells which I would agree, but these are the heaviest ones I have right now. Okay, side raise, ready? Five pounds, eight pounds, feet together, 90 degrees at your elbows, and come on up. So at the top of the exercise, as I coached Robin, your dumbbell really should be directly in front of your elbow. So if you were looking in a mirror, you wouldn't be able to see your elbow because your dumbbell and your hand would be covering up your elbow. And then that is proof that you're keeping that 90 degrees at the elbow. Really good, Jillian, that looks great. Granny Franny, I see you. Granny Franny, at the bottom, come more to here. You're kind of coming to here, come to here. Straight up, come to here, up come to here. Yes, much better, good job. Good job guys, 15. Kathy Connors, you look great and I can see you're using a heavier weight load. You go girl, I'm so proud of you. I can always see the way people move their body. I can tell if it's, a he if it's the right weight load for you just by watching how you do it, right? If it's too heavy, if it's too light. Short break, short little break, you really should need it. That weight load should be challenging enough that you need it. 
And then you can do your third superset if you want. Let me demonstrate the next two exercises for the next superset. Please listen, disclaimer, you guys. Even though I'm gonna be encouraging you to challenge yourself with your weight load, you still have to have good technique. You still have to be safe. Please do not hear me and pick up a weight that's too heavy for you. Don't go over and grab up your 50 pound dumbbells because Holly said to go heavier, all right? It should be that the last two repetitions are hard. When you get to 15, you should not want or be able to do 16 or 17, follow me? So still be really exquisite with your technique. It's just that the last two reps should be a little bit sloppy. If the last five reps are sloppy, your weight is too heavy. Cool? Let me show you the next two exercises. You definitely want a heavier dumbbell for this. I've got one heavier kettlebell that I'm gonna use. We got goblet squat. Toes are turned open. Heels are the width of your shoulders. Keep your chest up, sit deeply. Here's your bottom of a goblet squat. Your butt is below your knees. Your hips are below your knees. Squeeze your booty at the top. Butt tuck under, squeeze your booty. There's your goblet squat. Then uh, with that same dumbbell, okay? Let me demonstrate with the dumbbell. Whatever dumbbell, if you just used a dumbbell for your goblet squat, same dumbbell, one arm overhead press pause at the bottom, overhead press, pause at the bottom, overhead press, pause at the bottom. You'll do your reps on this arm and then we will do the reps on the other arm. So it's a unilateral, you're using this hand to counterbalance because even though we're on one arm, it's not a lean. You're not leaning, you're keeping your shoulder girdle locked off. Arm is the only thing that's moving, cool? Okay, let's go, goblet squat. Grab the heaviest dumbbell that, that you have that's appropriate to your fitness level, right? At your chest, in contact with your sternum, make sure that it's keeping contact. Heels, width of your shoulders, toes turned open. Drop your booty, squeeze your glutes. Drop your booty, squeeze your glutes. Keep your chest lifted, especially at the bottom. Please count your repetitions for 15. And remember, this is a bigger exercise, so it can handle a heavier weight load. Depending on your fitness level, depending on your journey, if you need to take a little bit of a rest mid-set, take a rest. I would rather this be challenging so that you need to take a rest. I would rather that be the case than for you to be plowing through this exercise, um, you know, feeling good and high energy and not needing a rest. Because here's why. I believe what my gift is to offer you is to help you build muscle and get strong. There are thousands and millions of fitness instructors out there that can just get your heart rate up and give you a sweaty high intensity workout. I don't believe that that is really what the world needs more of. And it certainly just isn't my, it's not, well, I mean, I guess it could be my gift, but it's just not what I believe philosophically. So if you want more of like high intensity, rah, rah, sweaty, high heart rate, go to Kira Stokes, go to Danielle Pacente. All right, go to somebody else. I'm here to teach you heavier weight loads, build your strength, build your muscle. And I promise it's gonna serve you better in the long run. Second exercise, over, overhead arm press. Single arm press, feet together. Here we go. Overhead, single arm press. Your dumbbell moves from in front of your shoulder to directly over your head. I know you can't see me on the camera for this exercise. Let me adjust my camera. Okay, dumbbell ends directly over your head not directly over your head. Your dumbbell actually ends between the shoulder and your head, okay? It ends directly over your collarbone, really. So it's not directly over your head, that would be here. It's in between the shoulder and the head. Right in between this trajectory is where your dumbbell ends. But it's neutral at the bottom, neutral at the bottom. So it's really a 45 degree angle from your shoulder, okay? So it's not here. It's not here, neutral, okay? Up over your head, and once you got your 15, go ahead and go right to that other side, keeping your shoulders locked off. Keep your shoulders locked off. 
so that there's not a lot of movement through this quadrant. Not a lot of movement through here, okay? You keep shoulders to hips locked off. The only thing that's moving is that dumbbell straight up over your head. Remember, if you're doing 15 here, and at the end of the set, you're like, all right, let's go, woohoo! That means you could have done a little heavier. So I'm definitely feeling the muscular involvement. My muscle, my deltoid is getting tired throughout this set. So at the end of the set, my muscle is like, yep, we're done. That is where you want to be. Still good technique, still really good technique, but the muscle is fatigued enough that it wants a break. Even if it's 10 to 20 seconds, 10 to 20 seconds. And for those of you that want a little bit longer rest, that's cool too. There have been times in my strength training journey where I needed four to five minutes rest in between a set. Now it wouldn't be for an exercise like this. It would be when I was doing a very heavy deadlift or a very heavy barbell squat, but I would need four to five minutes of rest because it was so intense, right? Your rest reflects your effort in the set. And at a minimum, you really should need 20 seconds of rest, maybe 30. Otherwise your weight load's not hard enough. Okay, back for our second set. Goblet squat is that first set. Let's come feet. See if you can grab a heavier weight load. Toes are open, definitely. Heavy onto your heels. Here we go. Keep your chest up. Squeeze your glutes. Tuck your pelvis. Squeeze your glutes. Tuck your pelvis. Right there. Really important. And it's something that, like, if you like to sort of bounce around Instagram and watch the video tutorials that other people put up, um, on Instagram, it's not real pretty. You know how a lot of the girls are doing this now? They're sticking their butt out to camera for videos because it gets the male followers. <laughs> the thing is, watch this. When you squeeze your butt, it does not look pretty. It is not pretty. So people are not showing that on Instagram because it's not attractive, okay? But it's correct. So squeeze your booty, tuck your pelvis. Squeeze your booty, tuck your pelvis super important and it's getting lost in our media friendly world okay because all the girls don't want their booty to look the way that it looks when you do that on camera nor do i by the way <laughs> i mean no shame there i don't want my booty looking like that either but <laughs> since it's just us <laughs> and this is a protected community you get to see the behind the scenes okay ready so this exercise, when you get to 15, you should be like, okay, my deltoid is done. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that you are struggling to get the weight load up, right? But it should be that your last two repetitions start to get sloppy. They start to get sloppy. They're not terribly sloppy, okay? They just start to get sloppy. So I think I'm probably around nine or 10 right here and I can feel my deltoids getting tired. So I got five more and I'm already a little tired, but my technique is good. I'm having to work for these last two. I just had to work for those last two. Now it might not look like it because I've got a certain kind of skill and controlled movement, even when I'm working hard. But the, those last two, my shoulder was like, oh yeah, I feel it, okay? And this is the direction we're gonna be going in these workouts. Now that I have a home gym. It got finished yesterday, it got painted yesterday and it turned out better than I thought. So excited. So we've got heated floors, we've got electric, we've got the new windows in, we've got insulation and painting. Now we just gotta get the lights up then I can get the Wi-Fi out there and the desk. So by next Saturday, we're probably gonna be in the new space, which is really exciting. So excited. Okay, nice and strong guys. So you better be there because it's gonna be a party next Saturday. I think we should do like, uh, what do you call it? Like a, what do you call it? When people do like a housewarming? Yeah, like a housewarming. We're gonna call it a gym warming party. That's what we should do. Let's have a party. Okay, you ready? Short break. 
Let me show you the next two exercises. Take a break if you need it. Next two exercises. Split squat. My beloved and the devil. This is one of those exercises that is so fabulous for you and such misery for many of us. Welcome. Here's what it looks like. Let me show you a couple of options because this is a hard exercise for a lot of people. A couple of options. Please listen up. Feet together. Knees soft. You step back. Space between your two feet. So space. Space from right to left between your two feet. If you come to here, you're going to lose your balance. So if you're losing your balance, it's because you need space between your right and your left foot. Okay, your feet should be in alignment with your hips. Split squat. Option one, body weight only. Body weight only, option one. Option two, body weight only with your arms over your head is harder. Option three is to hold a dumbbell at your chest. Option four, dumbbells at your sides. You pick. Second exercise, you'll have two dumbbells. We're gonna do an upright row. Upright row two dumbbells should be heavier. Ready? So pick your poison. I'm going to do one dumbbell at my chest because this is a very hard exercise for me. Feet together, knees soft, step it back. You're on your back toe and here we go. 15, drive into your front heel, but this is largely a front leg exercise, but your back leg is going to be busy. Your back leg is helping. And by the way, the weaker that your front leg is, the more your back leg is going to get involved. Okay? So if your back leg really gets involved and you get tired, that is proof that your front leg is weaker than we want it to be. Cool? The last three are always killer for me on this. I do better to do this at about 10 reps because it's just, it is hands down, hands down, my hardest exercise. Ooh, nah, barbell back squat's my hardest exercise of all. This is my second hardest exercise of all. Okay, 15 reps, take a little break if your heart rate's up, and you're gonna go right into that other leg. Feet together, knees soft first, find your position. Really take a beat to find your position before you begin this exercise, okay? It makes a huge difference if you set it up from really perfect position for your body. Driving into that front heel. Keep your chest up. It's all about that front leg. Second exercise, dumbbell upright row. If you're done already, dumbbell upright row. 15 with a heavier dumbbell, okay? Good job, you guys. Good job, you guys. Super tall at the top, and here we go. Two dumbbells. Heavier dumbbells, eight, maybe ten. Again, depending on your journey, depending on your ability. I think we talked about this exercise, I think it was last week. No, maybe it was two weeks ago. No, I think it was last week. Healthy shoulders should end with the elbow slightly above the shoulder. If you have problematic shoulders or a history of shoulder problems, end here. Elbow in alignment with the shoulder joint. Okay, follow me. If you have a history of shoulder issues, dumbbells end in front of the shoulder. If you have pretty healthy shoulders, get those elbows all the way up. Oh, does that feel good? This is one of my favorites. This is going to make your arms look so fine for summer. This is one of the best exercises to make your arms look right, look nice. Okay, a lot of people think arm, ex like you want your arm to look good, people do biceps and triceps. I actually find working on your shoulders makes your arms look better. I put way more energy into my shoulders 
less into my arms, which is why my triceps are a little soft right now. <laughs> but that happens to the best of us. <laughs> Short break, and then we're gonna do second set, split squat. How did that first one feel? If it was comfortable, challenging on your heart rate, but not challenging on your muscles, I want you to grab a heavier dumbbell and move more slowly. If it was challenging on your musculature, stay exactly where you are. If it was torture, you might wanna ease off your weight a little bit or do fewer repetitions. Okay, mine was perfect, so I'm gonna keep my weight the same. Keep your weight in contact with your body, with your sternum. Feet together, knees soft, second set. Here we go. Listen, this workout is about legs and shoulders. It's a strength workout. So I want you to be challenging yourself here, right? Remember, challenging yourself, not killing yourself, 20% beyond what you want to do today. 20% beyond what you're capable of today. 20% beyond your energy and your fitness level today. And that might look different than it did on Tuesday. And that's okay. Follow me. 15 here. If this isn't uncomfortable, flag me and I will check your technique. Because I don't know that I've ever met a woman that this was easy for. All right? Almost every woman I know, this is a challenging exercise. Super challenging, even if you're super fit. Elaine, that looks great. Really, really good job. Elsa, great upright row. Good job, you guys. Emmy, I see you. Emmy, guys. Emmy's going for the double dumbbell overhead split squat. I'm impressed. <laughs> Other leg, if you haven't started already, you can take a short break in between legs and then go to the other leg. Feet together, knees soft. Take your beat to set it up beautifully. You're definitely gonna feel some compression on that back toe. Definitely gonna feel compression on that back toe. Uh, the amount of discomfort on your back toe is a reflection of the health of your feet and your toes. So if this is pretty comfortable on your back foot, big high fives, that means you've got very healthy feet. If this is super uncomfortable on your back toe, that's feedback that we need to work on it a bit. We gotta work on your forefoot flexion, okay? And it's usually because your glutes are weak. Toe issues here usually reflects weak glutes. Toe issues in general pretty much reflect weak glutes. Okay, upright row. Emmy, we twinsies today. I love it. We've got our Black Women's Strength Nation tanked up on, guys. We are fully stocked. If you have not gotten your Women's Strength Nation tank top, I've got lots. Just come to my website, hollyperkins.com. Go to the shop and you'll see your options there if you want one. Jill Espring, get your camera on so I can see you. Such a pretty picture of you, though. Okay, upright row. If you haven't done it already, hop to it. You're probably midway through your set. We're gonna do it real quick, and I'm gonna show you guys our last super set, which is all abs. So today's workout, legs and shoulders with abs. So our first four supersets were all legs, shoulders, which is such a great um, strength training protocol. Supersetting with different muscle groups provided you have to take a break, right, is a great strength training structure. So if you joined me for the um, special event training that I did a few weeks ago, how to build your own strength training workout program, I talked about this. And this is a workout protocol that's super productive, provided you work hard during both of the sets. Take a little break, okay? If your heart rate's up a little bit, that's good. You need a little bit of a rest, okay? Finish out your second or third superset, depending on where you are. Let me show you our two exercises. So here's the deal. When it comes to ab exercises, friend, 
The basics are gold. And it's why I teach so many basics in strength training, because for most women, it's really what we all should be doing with the basics. So we're doing two basic ab exercises today because they're the best. And these two exercises, not that other exercises aren't good, there are other good exercises out there, but the more creative your ab exercises get, the less likely they're really gonna bring about a lot of change. Because the truth is there's five aspects to your core and to the musculature of your tummy. You got your transverse abdominus, which we talked about. We've got rectus abdominis. We've got internal obliques and we've got external obliques. Those are the four main muscle groups within your abdomen. And then you've got your core, which is basically, I consider it sort of like a fifth muscle group because it's everything around your whole area, including your postural mus muscles, okay? So there's really only four, four basic muscles to your abs. First one, we're hitting rectus abdominis. Second, we're getting rectus abdominis plus your internal and external rotators with the rotation. First exercise, all fours crunch, hands at your head, but don't pull. All four come up, tap your knees, relax down. The name of the game is to try to get your shoulders up off the ground as much as you can. And also don't fully relax your feet to the ground. Your feet just kind of touch the ground before you come back up. Second exercise, you start at the top here, and then we're gonna go into bicycles. Crossing, 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 keeping the shoulders up. Really, these two exercises, if you were to do nothing else and really work these two exercises, you're gonna have functional, great looking core, provided your diet's on check. Okay, uh, here we go, let's start. All fours, you've got anywhere from 20 to 30 repetitions for your all fours crunch, same for your bicycles, depending on what you want to do, depending on, hello, depending on your ability, depending on what your 20% is today. Let's start with 30 reps on all fours crunch. Okay, buddy, we have to do our exercises now, okay? Yeah, okay, okay. Okay, scooch. Here we go, crunch those elbows up. Okay, bud, okay, bud, go over that way. Go over that way, where's your buddy? Oh, okay. All four crunch, come on up, tap those knees and relax down. Just don't fully release your feet to the ground. And I want you to really try to get your shoulders up off the ground as much as you possibly can. Exhale, exhale, 30 reps here, exhale. Lift their shoulders up as high as you possibly can, depending on how long your legs are, depending on how long your arms are, depending on all kinds of stuff. You're gonna cover more distance or less, okay? If this is hard for you, you don't have to come up super, super high, okay? Hey, Jane Colnane, if you've got a dumbbell behind your head, let me know. You don't, right? You don't, okay, good job, okay. I can only see a teeny tiny thumbnail and it almost looked like you were holding a dumbbell behind your head and I was gonna give you a different direction. Good job, guys, really, really good. Use your breath, short little break, just a few seconds and then we're gonna go into bicycles. Bicycles start from the top, starting from a crunched position and then you come into your crossovers, okay? I really like to start bicycles from up here, you ready? crunch so you're starting from a contracted place so the first phase is eccentric if you've been with me before you've heard that i always like for women to start on the eccentric as often as possible and the reason for that is because you are stronger on the eccentric and so when we start an exercise on the eccentric phase you tend to have better technique throughout the whole set that's one of those things that probably nobody out there in the world is talking about, but I, A, it's backed by science. If you want to do enough reading on it, it makes perfect sense if you understand science of it. But more than anything, I've noticed it from being in the gym with women and training people in the gym, is that when you start a move on an eccentric, people tend to have better technique and they tend to be, um, have just a higher quality set 
for all the reps. So listen, 30 here is 15 on each side. If you want to do more, go for it. Just make sure you're keeping your shoulder, shoulders up off the ground, shoulders up off the ground, up off the ground, keep it nice and high. Use your breath. If you feel like you can go forever on this exercise, I want you to get your shoulders higher up off the floor. When you finish your set, take a short break, rock your knees side to side, and then we're gonna do a second set of both of these exercises. And if you want a bigger workout, you'll do a third superset of these two exercises. We're gonna do two. But here too, if you don't need a little bit of a break in between these sets, chances are your technique isn't great. Or, or you need to do more repetitions. Because the truth is when we're doing ab exercises like this, it's really more of a muscular endurance and we can't add more weight, right? So if you're doing 30 and 30 and it's not challenging, check your technique first, but then you might just need to add some reps because that's how we challenge the abdominal muscles is by adding reps. Now, I'm also really a big fan of adding resistance for ab exercises, but it's really hard to do outside the gym. And, or, I mean, you can do some of it with a resistance ball or a bench, but for this style of a home workout, we just have to add reps. All right, second set, you ready? So if your technique is really, really good and those first two sets were comfortable for you, I want you to do 40 or 50. Really use that breath, get those shoulders up off the ground as high as you possibly can, okay? Really bring those elbows up, super, super strong. Adelia, that looks awesome, good job. Hi, everybody, Abby, hi, Carmen Ward, Charlene, Leela, Annie, Alicia, Dory, Krishanti, that's such a beautiful photo of you. Christina Scott, how are you doing, Yana? Hold on, Kathy Connors, I'm coming for you. Hey, wait a minute, those two ab exercises are killer. <laughs> yeah, those two together are killer for sure. Totally, short little break, short little break. And then we're going to do that second set. Okay, second set, you ready? Again, moving at your own speed, okay? Guys, I love, we have 47 or more people here with us today. We've been having about 50 women per workout here on the weekends, which makes me so, 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 so happy. And it's only going to get better. It's going to get better, you guys. I'm so excited about my new gym. Okay, it's going to get better. I'm going to bring you guys better workouts, more opportunities, more workshops, more good stuff. Bicycle crossovers. You ready? Start at the top. Let's go. If you haven't already, you're probably out ahead of me. Hey, let me give you one more option. If this bicycle crossover, if you're certain you're doing the right technique, here's what I want you to do. If you've got a good technique and it's not hard, you're gonna extend your outer leg all the way down and tap the floor, tap the floor, tap the floor, okay? When I got my abs really, 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 really ripped, that's what I was doing and I was doing like a hundred of these. And my diet and the rest of my strength training was really on point. So I personally don't believe that if you want a great looking tummy, I don't believe it happens from ab exercises. I really don't. Ab exercises are important for function and to keep you strong. And once the rest of your body is at the right body composition, body fat levels, then the ab exercises make it look better. But we really do ab exercises for function. Okay, when you're done, knees into your chest and you're gonna rock side to side. When you're done, take your time and finish out your sets. We're gonna do a couple stretches, foot mobility, and walking lunge workshop if you wanna stick around. But first, before you leave, I wanna get a photo of us. Now that we're back on my computer, I wanna get our Glutey Gang photo. So if you will stick around in just maybe one or two minutes, 
let's grab a new photo because I haven't done that for a long time. Okay, one stretch. Cross one leg up over the other, pull in towards your chest. Okay, legs are crossed, I call it a dinner table cross, a nice tight dinner table cross. One leg is on top, doesn't matter which. Bring it in and you're gonna get a great glute stretch. A really good glute stretch. Relax and switch sides. Uh, it's normal for one side to feel very different than the other side, for one side to be tight, one side to feel like it makes sense, and then one side's gonna feel sort of like um, clunky and misaligned, totally normal. Just a little gentle stretch and release. Now I want you to roll onto your side, come onto your hands and knees, bring your feet together, tuck your toes under, shift back and sit onto your feet and with your feet together, roll forward and back. You have the choice of pressing your heels together or not. Okay, pushing your heels together makes this even harder. You can also keep your heels separated. Mine are separated by like half an inch. A teeny tiny bit my heels are separated, but you do wanna look down and make sure that your feet are really truly symmetric to each other. And you're walking forward so that your knees come to the ground, bringing a lot of flexion to the feet. If this is super comfortable for you, bring it forward, sit it up, sit on those toes, okay? really put some pressure down into the flexibility of these toes. This is a great mobility move that you really should be doing every day, but we also do it because it's great for our walking lunge workshop, which we'll do in a moment if you want to stick around. If you haven't done it with us before, I'll explain in a moment. It happens after the workout. For now, come back into your crouched position, and then I want you to stand up, and as soon as you get there, please lift your knees 10 times before you do anything else. First up, if you're willing to join us on camera, please do so. I wanna see your best bicep flex and get a photo of all of these beautiful faces that are here today. And then we're gonna do walking lunge workshop and then I will go through some questions. Okay, fix your bangs. Fix your bangs, everybody. <laughs> okay, hold on. Everybody come give me a big smile. Hold on, I gotta get my camera. Oh, perfect. Okay, let me see those biceps. Yes! Stay there, because I got a couple pages. Stay there, stay there, stay there. Biceps! I love it, love it, love it. Awesome, you guys. Jessica Knight, so fun to see you. Amazing, you guys. Okay, if you want to stick around for walking lunge workshop, let me tell you real quick what we're doing. It's so fun to see all your faces. It's so fun, Monica, I see you. Dory, I see you. Amber Gaines, hello. Natalie Sorrell, going for some more shoulder exercises. <laughs> You're hilarious. <laughs> Elizabeth, oh, so fun to see all of you guys. So great to see your faces. Okay, so walking lunge workshop. Here's what we do. If you're new to the game, I'll teach you body weight only walking lunges. We are doing them for um, function and muscular endurance. So the name of the game here is to go for more over a period of time, not heavy. If it's your first time here, you're gonna start with two sets of 20. Each weekend, you're gonna add about 10 more. And wherever you were last week, I want to invite you to try to maybe do 10 more. Walking lunges, let me change my gallery view. Hold on one second, guys. Good, so the recording, it's just me. Okay, walking lunges, if you're new to this, one repetition is one step. It looks like this. Feet together, knees soft. Step, there's one. Step, there's two. Step, there's three. You're gonna do 20, take a break, two sets. You guys ready? You're welcome, Christina, have a great weekend. You guys ready? Wherever you are, it doesn't matter. If you did 200 last weekend and you can only do 20 today, that is okay. Today's workout should be about 20% harder than where you were last week, whatever that looks like. Feet together. Are you ready? Let's go. So this is you against you. Whatever is right for you today. I'm happy to announce I had some really good walking lunges this week. 
my workouts have not been good, but um, walk-in lunges are something that I do no matter what. And I was really just really working my technique this week. Um, so today my walking lunges feel amazing, largely because I was working on my technique and I was working on um, the mobility that you need for good walking lunges. So walking lunges really are one of the best mobility exercises you can do. You'll notice if you hang with us for this workshop, week after week after week, if you just kind of keep refining your technique, adding 10 steps per weekend, you're gonna notice in your normal daily life and your other workouts, you're just gonna start to notice that your whole lower body works a little bit better. You feel stronger, it works better. When you're walking, you're gonna feel better. Going up and down stairs, you're gonna feel better. Your body just sorta makes better sense when you're really committed to these body weight only walking lunges for the purpose of functionality. So I'm gonna do about, I'm gonna keep my numbers kind of low these days. And I'm gonna do about, let's see, I can get eight per length. I'm gonna do about 40 today, I think. And I can't wait to hear from you. Please share where you are today in terms of your walking lunges. If you're new to this practice, or if you're kicking butt, I know some of you guys are up in the 200, some of you guys are really, you've been so consistent and really making great progress. I'm trying to keep tabs on everybody, so definitely please share. When you step together, squeeze your glute. Step together, squeeze your glute. You squeeze the glute on the leg that you've just stepped onto. So if you're stepping forward onto your right leg, you squeeze the right side of your glutes, okay? When you step onto your left leg, you squeeze your left glute. Walk it out in between your sets while I rest and then take a couple questions. I think we need to have a gym warming party. We should do like a live Zoom party when I christen the gym. Spray some champagne all over. Okay, any questions? Let me check here. More marks, just what I needed. Amazing. I love it. Robert Stevens, Brooke Gaines. Okay, Carmen, I see you. When I do the upright dumbbell row, it's difficult to keep my wrists from turning down. Really normal. Really normal, Carmen. So probably what needs to happen, you might wanna do a slightly lighter weight load on that upright row. Um, and so it's so normal to kind of come to here. Try, it's, and it's okay if they do drop a little tiny bit, but you actually might want to do a slightly lighter weight load and to some degree, just practice. Some of it might just be that Generally, what we do with our wrists is reflective of our deltoid. So, and this applies to everybody. When your delts are weak, your body wants to shorten the lever length, right? So if you remember physics from high school, that shortens this lever, okay? And so when we go like this with the dumbbell, that's now lengthening out this lever. And so that makes it harder on the deltoid. So it's entirely possible that Carmen, some of it is just, we got to get your, your shoulders a little stronger and then your wrists will really be able to fully hold that weight. There's no problem in this per se. Um, I just, you know, we want to keep your wrists safe. And so just try to straighten them out if you can. And over time, you'll get better at it. Short little break. And then we're going to do a second set. If you would like to stick around for a second set. Natalie is using 15 pound dumbbells for the RDL. Girl, I'm so proud of you. What's the difference with the shoulder exercise with the dumbbell versus the band? Um, huh, Laura, you're hilarious. Laura Collarin says you're killing me, Holly. Your booty looks great in any shot. You guys, it does not look good. When you go like this, you squeeze your butt together. That just does not look attractive. When it's like right to the camera and you go like that, it just doesn't look good. No one's butt, no one's butt looks good when you do that. 
It really doesn't. And that's why the Instagram models don't do it. They go, they stick their booty out and then they end right here where their booty still looks good. They go like that and then they, they stay right there with an arched back because then your booty still looks good. But that's actually not what you're supposed to do for the exercise. That's the thing that kills me about this industry. Hilarious. I don't want to do it either. I don't blame them. Okay, so um, let's go for our second set. While we're doing our second set, Natalie, Sorrell, I'm going to answer your question. Okay. Okay, let's do this. Let's do this, guys. So um, Natalie and everybody, just for your info, Natalie basically asked, what's the difference in those shoulder exercises doing it with dumbbells or with resistance band? Here's the deal. There's technically no difference in terms of working on the muscle that we're focused on. So if you do the same movement pattern with a different um, apparatus, the muscle is still getting the work and the load. The, the, the difference is a band is what's called variable resistance. And that's because it provides a different level of resistance when the band is stretched versus when the band is short. So if you do, let's say, an upright row with a band, Natalie, at the top of the exercise, the band is gonna be fully stretched out. So at the top of the exercise, on an upright row with a band, you're gonna have maximal resistance at the top. And, you know, there's pros and cons to that, put it that way. In some ways, there's a lot of benefits to that. Now, a dumbbell is a fixed resistance because it's weight load, if you're using an eight pound dumbbell, um, I think you said you're using 15, but if you're using, let's say a 15 pound dumbbell, that dumbbell is 15 pounds at the bottom and it's 15 pounds at the top, except for positionality. Changes it on the muscle. So technically, that's one of the reasons why I'm such a fan of using a pause at the point of maximal contraction. Because when you use a fixed resistance like a dumbbell and you pause at the point of maximal contraction, you're getting more load on the muscle. So the truth is there's not really a major difference um, other than your muscle experiences it a little bit differently. And I would say both are effective they're just different. So it's a good idea to practice swapping out the apparatus that you use over time, but also making sure you stay somewhat consistent so that you know you're making progress. You've heard me mention in the past, I don't like people hopping around too much because if you hop around a lot, you never really learn if you're getting better at any one good thing, right? Does that make sense? So the long answer distilled down is, there's not really much of a difference. It's a different load, but both are effective. And there's a time and a place to use bands and there's a time and a place to use dumbbells. I just like, I find dumbbells, they're freer and they feel more comfortable on a muscle, right? There's just something you can unmute yourself if you want. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I thought you had said something about timing. Like I just couldn't remember it, but I, I was, you know, trying to think about what's the difference between kind of this versus the band. And I was like, well, I thought she said it had to do with kind of where the resistance is. And again, you just gave the whole example, but it, it sounds like it's just, it's, it's minimal difference and how the yes. muscle experiences the tension, I guess. Exactly. That it, yep. And then it's, um, Provided you're doing the same exercise, right? Like dumbbells here versus a band here, not a big difference. And therefore, whatever you prefer. Like I said, I just think dumb dumbbells more comfortable and more effective on my muscles. My muscles experience dumbbells better than bands, but some people love bands. And, you know, I've got some- Someone, someone told me once, Holly, that when you have a band that your, mu your muscles can compensate. Whereas when you have- when you have a dumbbell in each hand, no hand can hide. Oh, like, interesting. You know, so is that, is there any Kind of sorta. Kind of think sorta. about it. When you have a band, right? Yeah. You both, both yeah. arms are doing it, but man, yeah. five and five or yeah. 10 and 10, nobody's yeah. hiding. Everybody's yeah. got I think there's some truth to that for sure. 
Well, yep, yeah. definitely. I think there's some truth to that for sure. Yeah. And, and maybe that's why I like dumbbells more, right? Mm-hmm. It, it just feels more effective on my muscle. Um, Got it. And, you know, like I said, hey, say hello to everybody. <laughs> so and cute. I remember he was a puppy. Oh my God. I know. Can you believe it? He that's is like so a full grown man. Look at him. He's <laughs> yes. a man. Yeah. He's oh, totally. His eyes are so boy. cute. I know he's such a big boy. Well, thank you. That's helpful. Yeah, you're welcome. It It was a really good question. Thank you for that. Of course. Good question. How are your walking lunges coming? Okay, she's gone. Okay, guys. Kathy Connors, three sets of 30. Good? Yeah? Good job. Yeah, good job, girl. Carmen, okay, great work as usual. I can use 10 pounds on some exercises. Guess I can get to 12. Exactly. If you can do 10 pounds on an exercise and you're still feeling good, you can do 12, Carmen. I'm so proud of you. Really good. Okay, Linda Landry, two sets of 50 walking lunges, heart rate at 110. That's amazing. Good job, Linda. So glad you're here. Yana, two sets of 50. Good job. That's new for you, right? I feel like that's, is that a first? Hold on, let me find you. Where are you? Is that a first for you? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Are you gone? Oh, there you are. I see you. Is that a first for you? 50? I knew it. Good job. Good job. Good job. Doesn't that feel amazing? 50 is like, I'm a badass. I mean, listen, 30 is badass, you guys, for real. So happy for you. That is amazing. Um, All good, Natalie. Uh, 20 with 10 seconds in between and then another 20. Good job. Good, 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 good. Okay, amazing. Let's see, Laura, great advice about heavier weights. I think it is good to have a plan. And I think I'll focus on the weight and not the sweat. 100%, you guys. You know, here's the thing. Listen, I can give you guys a sweaty workout. I just don't think that that's like, I don't think that's my gift. And I don't think that's like the best of what I can offer. You can go get a sweaty workout from a million other experts out there. There's so many other places out there. You can just go get a raw, raw, high energy workout. And I just feel like what I've got to teach is just a little different. And so... But, you know, we still did like last week, we did our full body with cardio. You know, it's still going to be part of our rotation here. I just know you're going to get more out of a true strength workout. You are so welcome to everybody saying thank you. Let's see. Any other questions? Dory, I love when you said we are getting a behind the scenes when talking about those bottle butts. It's so true, you guys. It drives me nuts, but I also understand. Like, you know, there are a lot of these women that gather a following by really showing a lot of booty and... That's what they do and that's okay. And they're not going to show you what it really looks like to squeeze your butt at the top. It's just not attractive and that's okay, right? It's just not a hundred percent. It's not serving you, right? It's like a lot of these fitness model-y type girls. It's like, they're really serving themselves more than they're serving you because they're trying to build a following and they have a right to do that. That's their business, right? Okay, Jack Curran, goblet squats are so hard for me, even with lighter weights. It's a hard exercise. It's a really hard exercise because it's such a big range of motion, such a big range of motion. Um, So just know, and guys, Jack Curran's a woman. She's probably using her husband's account. Just so you know, I generally don't have men here with us. Um, But Jack Curran, um, 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 it's a very hard exercise for a lot of people it happens to be an easier exercise for me because I've been doing it for so long. So I make it look easy, but it's actually very challenging for a lot of people because of the huge range of motion. Um, And so even if you're doing it with a light dumbbell, that's totally okay. Totally okay. Leslie Taylor, so glad that you are here. So good. Leela, I can get cardio by other means. You're absolutely right. You are absolutely right. Oh, Leela, you are so welcome. Okay, I'm looking for any other questions. Okay, I got that one. Oh, interesting. Aaron, 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 if you're still here, my audio is a little distant when you're in position. I wonder why. Is my microphone not on? No, my microphone's on. I'm not sure why. Yeah, I mean, it's not, you know, I don't, I might have to get like a proper true microphone for you guys one of these days. I don't want to do it, but I probably will do it eventually. Um, for now, we're just dealing with these guys. They are the newest ones, but you know, they're still not, it's not a perfect microphone. That is for sure. 
Okay. All right, guys. Any final questions? Joanne, I only have 12 pound weights, which is much lower than I'm one, what I'm used to in the gym. I hear you. I'm used to a 35 kettlebell, 35 pound kettlebell for my RDL and gobble squat. Yeah. So in that case, right? Like Joanne, like if you think you're going to be going back to a gym for your workouts and you don't want to invest in lots of, um, equipment at home, you make do with the weight that you have. And so if you're using a 12 pound weight, but you're used to heavier, you're going to want to do more reps and more sets to make it harder. Okay. Okay, guys. So listen, um, you guys are all on my email list. Otherwise you wouldn't be here. Stay tuned because I think maybe we should have a party. I think we should have a party where we all get a little dressed up. We have a glass of wine and I have an unveiling of the gym. There's not going to be anything in it yet. But it's just a fun reason to have a little bit of a party. So stay tuned because I think we might do that. We might be doing that. Stay tuned. For now, have a fabulous weekend. Um, if you have any questions, you can hit me up by email. You'll get a um, email from me tomorrow. Natalie, I'm down. I love it. Let's do it. Wouldn't that be fun? I've never done that. Have a virtual party. It'd be so fun. Um, you'll get an email from me tomorrow with the recap of today's workout. And then I will see you next week. Let me know if you have any questions. Have an amazing weekend. I love you. I love you. I love you. And I'm so glad you're here. Have a great day.